I'm going to show you how to make a tripod slab cup. And what this means is a tripod means it has like three little feet at the bottom um, and it's just a regular cup. So we're gonna start with a slab and we're gonna use our rib and run it over the slab to compress it um, and smooth it out. If you're getting little lines on your slab, it usually means that your rib is not clean, kind of like mine was just doing. So I just needed to get all those little crumbs off of my rib so they weren't making marks. So I'm gonna compress my slab. If I ever find bubbles or anything like that, um, I can use a needle tool and kind of poke them and then just compress a little bit more um, and that should get them out. So the first step that I do is I'm going to have a bottle and a piece of paper and I'm going to roll my slab around it. So in order to do that, I need to start with a straight edge here at the bottom. I mean, this will be kind of the bottom of my cup. I'm pretty good at drawing just like a straight edge by myself, but if you're not, use either one of the sticks that we use for rolling or use one of the... Um, measuring sticks. So I've got a nice straight edge there at the bottom. And I can just take this clay, set it to the side. Uh, and then I want to do a nice um, edge here too on the side. I don't know how much clay I'm going to need yet, so I'm just going to make it kind of right here. So I'm basically making a 90 degree angle right here like this or an L shape to get it started. Um, I kind of know about how big I want to do it. So I don't want it to be like fully a hand size. If I'm, you see me holding this, um, this is about the size of my hand. So somewhere around as tall as your hand, it can be a little bit shorter if you want, it's completely up to you. So I'm just gonna cut the top side too. Just trying to keep these even. I don't want it to be like really wonky where one side's really big and one side's really skinny. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. If you want to be really precise, you can use a, measure, a measuring stick and uh, measure it all out, but I just like to kind of eyeball it. All right. Got a nice even one there. And then I'm not gonna cut this end because I don't know how short or long I need it to be yet. So like the instruction said, I'm going to roll my slab around my can. So I'm going to take this, and this is my bottle, my paint bottle that has paper already rolled around it. Um, and the paper will allow us so that it won't stick to the bottle and we'll be able to get it out. I'm going to start on one end, and I'm just going to roll. And that will allow me to figure out where does it go to. I don't want to cut it right where they meet. I want to have a little bit of extra room. So I'm just going to give it, um, it's kind of hard to see. They meet like right in here. I'm going to come out just a little bit and cut it right about here. That'll just give me a little bit of breathing room so that I have some extra space. Okay, I'm going to set it up. And look at it like this. So what we have now, um, our second step, is we're gonna cut an angled joint. This is called a bevel. And what it does is it um, makes it so that these two pieces of clay will fit together really nicely. So the bottom one and the top one will kind of fit together as opposed to having this joint be really, really thick if we just cut it straight. So we're gonna cut it at an angle. It does not matter what angle you cut it at, but that's why you wanna have a little bit of an overlap here. So I've got a good overlap. I'm going to not have it straight up and down like this. No, thank you. I'm going to just angle it. You can angle it either way, whatever works best for you. This one looks a little bit sketchier to me, to like trying to keep that together. So I'm gonna angle mine this way and I'm just going to cut straight down. Okay. 
And again, this is called a bevel. And then what happens is I'll have this little extra piece and I'll have this little extra piece in here too. And I'll pull those out. I'll try to rotate it better so you can see that now I have these kind of two angled joints and they're gonna fit really nicely together. Just like that. If I hadn't done that, this joint would end up being like really thick, like out here. So I just angled cut those bevel them up. My next step is I'm going to score and slip that joint. Um, add, score it all up really well, add the slip on, um, and then I'm going to smooth it together on the outside. So I'm just going to kind of open it up a little, get my serrated rib, Um, and now I'm just going to smooth this so I can use my finger to smooth it. I can also use my rib. I'm going to kind of go in both directions to make sure that it's like nice and smoothed out and like really well connected. A little bit of slip or a little bit of water um, will kind of smooth it out if you've got any little rough parts. And just like compressing our slab, just doing this at a joint um, does kind of strengthen that clay together. Okay, that looks pretty good. So it's all smoothed out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paper and the bottle out, and I'm going to try to smooth the inside joint. So I'm going to set it back up. I'm trying to be really careful with all of this as I go, not to like put my fingers in like make a bunch of thumbprints, not to do stuff like that. So I'm gonna take this out. And then the paper will just kind of fold and usually you can save it so that somebody else can use it. Just like that. We'll go back around the bottle. And now I have this nice sphere. So the joint on the inside is still pretty bad. So it really needs to be smoothed in. So what I'm gonna do is take like a plastic modeling tool um, or your finger even, um, and just kind of go through there and smooth it in both directions again, just like I did on the outside. Um, sometimes it can be hard to like reach down pretty far, depending on how high yours is. So you might need to use that modeling tool to help you. I'm going to slowly move the bottom into a triangle position. The way I'm going to do that is by pushing in three spots, okay, until they kind of come together. So I'm going to first of all pick which side I like best and want to be like the rim of my cup. So this one's okay. Yeah, this one's a little rougher. I think I'm going to stick with this one. I like this one as the rim better. So I'm going to flip it over. This is going to be my rim. This is going to be the bottom and I'm going to, like it said, slowly start pushing in these three spots to make a triangle. So I'm going to kind of hold my hand like this, like I'm making a triangle and I'm pressing here and I'm pressing at the bottom and I'm doing this kind of slowly um, just to give the clay a chance to sort of move slowly so I don't get a lot of cracks. If you do it all at once, really quickly, um, you're more likely to get cracks. So it's just giving that clay a chance to slowly move and adjust. Okay. And just like that. It's okay if it doesn't fully meet. I'm gonna put a little piece of clay there. You also can try to get it to fully meet. Um, but I like kind of the shape of this, so I don't wanna mess with it too much more. Now these didn't fully come together, which is okay. 
um, but I am going to slip and score them and kind of smoosh them together. So I'm gonna kind of pull it back out a little bit. That's my next step. Score and slip, press the sides together um, and the corners. And it says it should look like this from the top with like a little hole um, and you can smooth out those joints. A little bit of a crack here along the seam. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna need to work on. Kind of going back over that with a rib. Is the last step, I'm going to roll a small ball of clay, press it flattish, and then I can add designs or my initials and I'm gonna score and slip it to cover up that hole. So just a little bit of clay. Sphere. Press it flat. Make sure it fits. Yep. Last thing I would do is just make sure that all my seams are still good. This one got kind of damaged a little bit in the bending process. So I would just go back through that a little bit and fix it and then um, kind of work on my rim. But I'll show you in the next steps how to do the inside because we don't want it to look like this at the end. You can't drink out of this. Um, it wouldn't be food safe. Everything would be able to get caught in those cracks. So we're going to kind of learn how to smooth this out.